though, at his heaviest. Our next guest once weighed 80 stone and was labelled the world's fattest man. But when Paul Mason joined us back in 2013, life seemed to be heading in the right direction. He had lost weight, found love and was planning to move to America. Well, sadly, things hadn't quite worked out the way Paul had hoped. Uh, in just a moment, we'll be speaking to him. But first, let's take a look at his new documentary, which airs tonight and chronicles his life over the last 10 years. At my lightest, just after my surgeries, I was 19 stone, but my mind was not right. I weren't that 19 stone person. What did you see? It was that thin person there. But to me, I was still that person carrying that excess skin. Your body, it takes time to adjust, and, and your mind definitely I'd carried out for so long and struggled with, you know, the issues around it all. There were the same issues as when I was really as big, really. I, I just can't relate to that person um, because I've got no one by my side telling me that is you. And um, Paul joins us now live from his home in Plymouth. Good morning. It's lovely Hi, to see you. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we'll come to what you were talking about uh, in the documentary there mm. in just uh, just a moment. But first of all, I wanted to ask you why you wanted to do the documentary in the first place, because this has kind of followed you over the 10 years and, and sort of born out of the fact of when you were looking for help and advice, you couldn't find anything out there, could you? No, I couldn't. It was um, pretty tough, you know, to um, get any um, help. Uh, and also, I couldn't find anybody... Um, in the male side of um, what the journey, their journey they've been on, there was very few. But the 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 internet was awash with ladies who have been on um, you know a weight loss journey. So I thought, right, this is um, this is the time for me to uh, make sure my doc documentary, I mean my journey, is documented. Yeah. You know and. Uh, I thought that will definitely help other people. Well, there are parts of this story which are utterly shocking. At your absolute worst, you had to live in a hospital in 2001. What did the form say if you died? Well, you gotta, what you've got to think of, Phil, is they were, the hospital was in a very unique situation. They never dealt with anybody my size. And um, they had a, they bought me a form um, to sign to say that um, if I died while I was in hospital at that size, they would have to dispose of my body in an abattoir, and the fam my family couldn't have no say in the matter. It was taken out of their hands, and they wanted me to sign this form, uh, which I denied. I said, "No, I'm not going to do that." And that is, I mean, that is so brutal and it must have felt very dehumanising for you. Well, yes, absolutely. It was, um, it was part of, you could say, part of my journey that um, you felt like uh, you're not a human um, and you're just a name on a piece of paper and um, it was one of the other... Um, you could say side effects of um, being as big as I was. Yeah. So um, you joined us in 2013, I think, um, and things were looking okay. You you found a girlfriend. Um, there was the you know the talk of uh, of sort of losing the weight, going to America, having the the skin the excess skin removed. So things were looking okay. What happened? Well, yes, I moved to America um, and uh, I had the uh, excess skin surgery and done it in two stages over two years. And um, the first uh, main amount taken off, it was about um, 80 pound, I think, or something like that. And uh, it was, um, it's a believe you've got a picture, have you, of me standing in the garden um, after I had that removed and I was right thin. Um, 
and uh, it reminds me of a photograph from 1977 that um, I was waiting for the Queen's Silver Jubilee to come past. And uh, I uh, looked similar to that, and um, it, it's go it, it just shows that you can quickly fix your body with... An, the surgeons can quickly fix your body, but they can't fix your mind as quick. So was that, was that the, the, the issue? It, was Because you, you had Rebecca, you found Rebecca, um, and, um, and yes. you had that skin reduction, eight stone of, of skin taken off eventually. Um, and so was, mm. that the, it, was that the issue? Is that the issue that um, you did manage to it, do that work on your body, but n not necessarily your head? Yes, Phil. Um, the, you um, you need therapy. Therapy is the main thing uh, for me, anyhow. Um, and I think it will help a lot of other people as well. I think the NHS do not put enough resources into the therapy side. Um, you can have six sessions on the NHS, and that's not even going to touch the, the 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 top, you know, uh, the surface. I mean. Um, and, uh, okay, I realised that in 2008 and I had, uh, I was able to invest in some therapy myself, um, from 2008 right up until 2014 when I left to go to America. And I thought after that, I thought I didn't need it. It was going to be, uh, going to a new country, starting a new life, um, having the surgery, getting my life back, living with somebody who could understand. But uh, it didn't work out, uh, I'm afraid didn't... to say that... It... Um... it didn't work out because what was still underneath it all was still there, like you said. You know, the, the person inside was still there and you feel that really your symptoms of this were the, the depression. Mm. Uh, at once the relationship with Rebecca broke down, the loneliness kept back in and then this compulsion to keep eating returns and the weight starts to gain and you're kind of back where you started not as bad but it's you want to do something before you get into that mm. situation again well, yes um now i've got um severe arthritis kicked in um now um so it's it's you know limiting mobility sorry can't say get the word out Mobility and um, it makes things harder now. Yeah. And uh, the um, the support Rebecca gave me was very good, but I think um, she just got to the stage where she couldn't do any more, and I could see that. It's very hard, I think, living with someone with an addiction yeah. and depression yeah. Yeah. and not understanding it. And you can you can explain things to her. I could explain things to her. Very small things I could explain, but I couldn't tell her how really I felt, you know, because I felt embarrassed. Oh, What's your... You know? um, and what, I ended up uh, going into hospital. Uh, now, having said that you, you sort of got down to, I think, 19 stone, which is what you were when you were about 17 and you feel so much better about yourself, what, 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 could you mind if I ask what weight you are now? I'm back to uh, 38 stone. I hope you get... I hope you get the... The therapy that you need, because you do say that yeah. this is a lot of this is in the mind and with the addiction. Um, the the documentary, yeah. the the world's fattest man, ten years on, is tonight at nine on ITV. And interesting stats: there were two point six million deaths due to COVID in the first year of the pandemic. There are over two point eight million deaths a year worldwide as a result of being obese. Um, thank you, and thank uh, you. and Paul, yes. I. I hope okay. I hope you get the help you need. Um, you good luck, because you say that life is really, really tough at the moment. You do spend a lot of time on your own. Um, so, uh, so let's hope you can do something about that. Thank, Thank you, you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.